Hey coaches, welcome to another edition of Talking Football with Coach Mackey. I'm your host, Coach Mackey. And yesterday, what I did was I asked coaches, I posted in the group, hey, what's one question you want to learn from me? Uh, I like, I'm thinking about doing this every Tuesday morning if I have time, hopefully I do. And I got a lot of interesting questions. Thank y'all so much for, um, for responding to that. Coach Smith, what's going on, buddy? If this sounds good, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know that it sounds good. And also, uh, go ahead and tell me where are you uh, calling in from on this Talking Football. Coach Mackey, we got Coach uh, Marcelo, Coach Angelo, what's going on? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about one of the topics that was asked in that uh, post yesterday. And this post is from actually Coach David Dinsmore. I hope I pronounced that name right. Uh, what are the benefits of pistol and offset? Or what are the benefits of being a pistol over being offset? Uh, Coach Angelo is from New Jersey. Welcome. Coach Russell, what's going on? How you doing? Coach Johnson, welcome, welcome. Uh, so here's the, here's the story. When we were coming up, maybe it was about four or five years ago, we were running inside zone, right? And if you know inside zone, you're supposed to be aiming for the center's butt. So you want to take it, you want to aim to the center's butt because everybody is blocking their man to the left, so we want to hit it at the center and go right. You don't want to go or run zone the same side as your line's blocking. Well, we had a problem. We had an issue. Our running back kept, instead of hitting it at the center's butt, he was hitting it B-gap, and then he was bouncing it outside. So we never, ever, ever got what we wanted because when you go back and watch the film, we had a cutback lane this way, but this guy kept bouncing it over and over again. And I love inside zone so much that I'm not going to get rid of it. So this is what we did. We decided, where's my marker? I mean, my eraser. There it is. We decided to put our guy in the pistol. So we put him here. We put him one yard back. And what that did is if I'm the quarterback, right, and I open up like this, now my running back only has one way to go. They only have the center. And I promise you, fellas, if they get to the center, they're not going to bounce it. They're going to cut back. Whereas when it's sidecar, if I'm here and then I open up, well, I still have, I'm given a path to my running back to actually hit that A or B gap and bounce it to the outside. So that's the first thing we did. And when we went pistol for that one year, we went halfway through the year. For the rest of the year, we only ran really one play, but it was the best running that we ever did. And this is why I like it. Now, I just drew up a normal 4-2, cover two, because if you throw the ball, that's what you're going to see. If they're in one high, you better be throwing four verts or something like that to make them pay. But when you go sidecar, what most defenses do is they set this apex player to the same side as the back. And the reason why is because they are now taking away your backside game. Defensive coaches are smart. They know that you like to play the RPO games to the backside of the running back, right? So, of course, they're going to put this here. And usually if it's a four-man, an even man front, they're going to set the three technique to this side. That's fine. You can do some things if you want to. You can bounce it over here if you want and then play the game with this grass area. But then they will catch up. So it's always a, a give and take, back and forth type of deal. But I promise you... If you put the running back right behind him, now they're screwed. They don't have now you can find out what the defensive coordinator's tendencies are. Do they always put it? One second. <laughs> Sorry about hey, you're absolutely right in high school life, man. I got someone was at the door, had to answer that. Sorry about that. All right, so what I was talking about is when you go pistol, now you can actually get what the defensive coordinator is doing. Where do they put this guy? Most of them, they will, if they don't have an indicator for the running back, they'll put him to the field, which is great because now you know you can game plan and be like, okay, when we're to the field, we're going to be actually running inside zone to the field. So we'll run it this way. And then what that does is now we have all this grass right here to deal with. So we can easily throw some kind of RPO type game right here and we'll kill them right now. Or, and this is the beautiful thing, let's say you're running, you're playing against an odd man front, right? So let me draw this up real quick. And you're gonna be running, can y'all see that, is that right? Okay, an odd man front, a three, four. 
Well, usually, let's just put it in two by two. Let's go again. There, 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 and there. What we tend to see is we tend to see this, right? Because they want to slant this way. Everybody has their thing, and then that's what we like to see. But sometimes you also have defensive coordinators that will bring this here and keep this out based on where the running back is. But if they don't, a lot of teams, they like to key this back depending on which backer to bring. But if they don't have someone to key, if they, they have no idea right here, well, now they have to do something. Most teams that when we went pistol like this, they stayed in a five-man box, which is if you like to run the ball, it's really simple. All you have to do is just run it because it's a hat for a hat. Or then you can see where do they bring that backer? Did they bring this backer from the field when it's balanced? In that case, they have to roll down like this. If not, you have a lot of grass. Or do they like to bring this backer from the boundary? It's, it's, it's something easy to do. Now, the, the con of being in pistol, it's kind of difficult to get the outside uh, run. So if you like pin and pull, I haven't found a way to make it work from pistol. If you like outside zone, you could, you know, just open up and hand it off and then boot that way. I don't like doing that, but if that's something you want, you can do. My suggestion is if you want the pistol to get the inside run game, and you can still do RPOs, you can still lock the backside and key an inside linebacker. You can do the one back power, things of that nature to get that second level read if you want. But if you want to attack the outside with the pistol, you can just motion and then catch and throw it. And then that can essentially be your outside run, things like that. So Coach uh, Dismore, that's a great question. Coaches, if there's any questions that you have, you know what it is, like uh, Coach Ian said, that high school life. If you have any questions, real quick, while I have time, put them in the comments below. Uh, thank you all for listening and watching. Uh, Coach Carter, pistol, changed the game for us, never looked back. I think it works. Also, if you like the two-back, we actually did two-back from pistol, and this is all we did. Normal two-back stuff, we put this guy here, we put the F there, and then we could still motion them this way or this way or if you get real creative and if you wanted you can keep the f there if it's actually two backs and you can motion the other back this way or that way and really dick with the defense so that's what you can do all right all right coach so if there's no questions i appreciate it thank y'all so much for joining and until next time let's continue to master the spread score points and have fun